sense of superiority. The condition or quality of being superior above another or others in a degree, position, rank, or station. Above the average in class status, intelligence, mastery, etc. In which the person may acquire a lavish lifestyle or wealth. They are susceptible to have many followers due to their position in the workplace. It is a practical discernment or realization, and not necessarily done with force. A similar complex is illusory superiority, a term used in social science which indicates an individual who has a belief that they are somehow inherently superior to others. It is when a person overestimates their abilities and qualities. Illusory superiority is when you think you're competent in certain areas when you're not, it is also called the Dunning-Kruger effect. The person believes they're more competent, versus a person who believes they're less competent. Incompetence is not having or showing the necessary skills to do something successfully. Which can make you feel unconfident and inferior to others. To be unconfident is to feel uncertain about one's ability to correct the lack of confidence or fulfillment. To be inferior is to feel below another or others in a degree, position, rank, or station. Below the average in class status, intelligence, mastery, etc. In which, the person may not acquire a lavish lifestyle or wealth. They are unsusceptible to have followers due to their position in the workplace. It is a practical discernment or realization, and not necessarily done with force. When both feelings of unconfidence and inferiority feelings are combined, it can attribute to a false superiority or illusory superiority. Many people conceal their illusory superiority of treating weaker targets, which can be a person, place, or thing. After no longer trusting the ability to meet the demands of the physical world, one may result in ego-boosting feelings and use them with force. This is why you hear of mass shootings and terrorist attacks. Or thugs driving around in pimped-out cars picking up 14-year-olds outside fast food restaurants, hair and nail salons, malls and even dropping them off at local prostitution alleys. By pointing at someone else's failure, in turn, they overlook their own need to rise above deep-seated resentment for horrible upbringings. Some people may lack education, moral guidance, or may be unhealthy physically. But generally, it is overlooking the ability to use courage, motivation, and strength as a heroic, noble, or honorable person. Everyone needs democracy, equality, and peace, however, some people overlook the possibilities of achieving the American dream with integrity. To become more competent read more nonfiction books that apply to your business and various areas of your life. Improving can help to become more knowledgeable and skillful. This is one reason to keep it real with self to be real with others. Inferiority and Superiority Complexes Since our culture acknowledges what is popular of the here and now, and today it is wearing the badge of pride to form the superiority mentality. The desire to do something great gets recognized in the world as a huge achievement, that later forms into a psychological downfall. People with an inferior complex tend to obtrude superiority, they often pretend to know more than others in areas where they have no experience or training. He or she ordinarily displays a disregard for the desires or opinions of others but often exhibits an intense reaction to insults. They tend to flatter those who give them admiral acknowledgement and despise those who don't display admiration. Displaying arrogance with a lack of empathy, faithfulness, or loyalty, bragging or boasting about something you don't have. Bullying, harassing, name-calling, and shaming others with a malice intent while imposing inferiority all show signs of false superiority. A superiority complex is a psychological disorder of narcissism, yet the underlying conflict is invisible to conscious awareness. The person experiences exaggerated feelings of self-importance, that bring on competing drive symptoms of mental illness. Inferiority and superiority complexes can rub off on others struggling to to overcome trauma. But incarceration of the mind is most of which is created by our own inaccurate or untrue perceptions. Sometimes the self-imposed boundaries, defined by our self-perception and status, are also our self-imposed limitations to our happiness. Most people struggling with detached personalities rather not admit they are struggling. They rather complain to the world than do something about it. In which, they pretend to get over a fight when the fight is still going on. When thirsting for conflict, you are still susceptible to more hostile conflict and it is just the calm before the storm. Denying the pain of despair or grief is a common mechanism that hides the face of painful life experiences and is a denial of sorrows. The person may often feel excluded from their local community to confront the world alone, and sure that can be terrifying. Remember you aren't the only one who has faced these types of struggles, there is someone out there that has it worse than you do. And sure, it can be frustrating dealing with someone who has inferiority and superiority complexes. Realizing you cannot change their actions or behavior, and you don't necessarily need to associate with their perceptions, perspectives, or views. Can help change the course of the conflict to a reconstructive thought process. Even though they prove you wrong and make you feel inferior to them keep it moving and take it one day at a time. We all are narcissistic in some way or another. Sense of violence and violation. Violence and violation can be personal or structural. When someone harms or injures another this is called personal violence. 
the effects are visible and can form into the material, physical, psychological, or spiritual harm. When the social system itself exploits someone or a group to benefit others, this is structural harm. The effects are invisible to those who benefit and those who suffer from such actions. A violation occurs directly between people and indirectly through structural inequities and injustices. Such processes as aging, disability, discrimination, and even immigration. Either way, if the experience disrupts a person's sense of meaning through fear or dread then this can constitute a violation. Privacy. Privacy is about context and boundaries, personal information, property, and self. You set boundaries when determining how to share personal information, property, or even oneself with certain people. Violation is a feeling of vulnerability where others can coerce or intrude upon personal boundaries. Violating with dominance. Being violated by an authoritarian parent emotionally can make you think irrational. Or people helping themselves to your personal property and or yourself. Even having been sexually abused or assaulted by someone you knew who used dominance over you. Or being violated by a parent using your ID to get the bills turned on in your name. Or, being violated by a parent using your finances to benefit another or others. Insecure and overbearing parents can be highly controlling and emotionally manipulative, also they can be mentally draining with the usage of the tongue. Sometimes you just want your parents to feel what it feels like to be violated by you, but this would be a sign of seeking revenge. The primary issue is not having been able to express the anger you felt from being violated. These tendencies often get passed down from the prior generation. These issues are insignificant at the time but eventually turns out to have been very significant that in turn continues to occur. Angry feelings are the response to your values being violated. For instance, when someone does something contrary to or doesn't do something in comparison to your values. If it will affect you directly this can bring on angry emotions such as berated, disrespect, insults, mistrust, threats even unjust blame. And knowing your values have been violated is worth knowing. During the time it is going on virtually summon your anger, and hold it, stare at the person with a glare that says, how dare you intrude on my boundaries. But in general, have respect for your emotions they are a part of the inner self, which involves taking care of oneself through repeated steps for full development. Sexual Abuse Violation Although sexual abuse is different than assault, the victim is a child rather than an adult, and normally the person would be superior to the victim. Sexual abuse experts say sexual abuse is never only about sex, and all too often it is an attempt to gain power over victims. It is unwanted sexual activity, any form of sexual violence including child molestation, incest, or rape. Perpetrators may use force and threats to take advantage of a victim who isn't old enough to give consent. Usually, victims and perpetrators know one another, yet still, the initial reaction to sexual abuse is fear, disbelief, and shock. The emotions go up and down or from one extreme to another with fear, dependency, fear of abandonment, distress over environmental conditions and survival, guilt, humiliation, isolation, loss of control, numbness, shame, self-blame, shock, and vulnerability. Long-term psychological effects are addictions, anxiety, attachment, and personality disruptions, depression, panic disorder, PTSD, simple and social phobia, or triggers. Other effects of abuse are alcohol and illicit drug usage, eating disorders, obesity, smoking, prostitution if a female, sexually transmitted diseases, etc. All effects can stem from flashbacks of memories or nightmares, unresolved issues. Sexual Assault Violation A sexual violation occurs when a person sexually touches another person without consent from that person, it is done against their will with force coercion, or physically. In general, sexual assault is defined as attempted rape, touching and fondling, rape, unwanted sexual contact, or even threats. It is a form of sexual violence that may include forced anal, groping, vaginal, oral penetration, drug-facilitated sexual assault, or sexual manner of torture. Generally, gang members and want-to-be gang members pull trains on young ladies, and then most of them end up prostituting. Gang members take advantage of young women to impose inferiority, knowing they will probably get pregnant, often to avoid taking care of the kids. Gang rapes happen all too often, but victims never divulge information for fear of attacks and threats against family or friends, etc. One in six women experience rape and one in five girls and one in twenty boys experience childhood sexual abuse. Men and boys are less likely to report sexual violence than women and girls. This society doesn't take the sexual assaults of men seriously, our culture believes men cannot be victims of rape. As a result, male victims of sexual abuse and assaults face this culture which tells them their abuse stems from homosexuality or weakness. So, men are reluctant to mention their abuse or assault. In the US military, Men are 10 times likely to be sexually assaulted than non-service members, and more male service members are assaulted than female service members. An estimated 81% of male victims of military sexual trauma never report their attacks, 
probably due to the sexual assaults being driven by dominance and not the sexual contact itself. Men who do report their attacks get treatment, receive punitive charges may be falsely diagnosed with mental conditions, and then discharged to face possible employment discrimination and homelessness. When attacks are reported and go to trial, only 7% of the cases, perpetrators are convicted and punished. In the LGBTQ community, hate crimes account for a significant number of sexual assaults they experience. Sexual violence in the LGBTQ community occurs at the same rate as those who identify as heterosexual. Since LGBTQ survivors of sexual violence face heterosexuals, homophobia, or transphobia through the legal system, they are reluctant to report the attacks. Sexual abuse and assaults have been going on since the beginning of time. Nowadays people are more open to talking about traumatic events, in great hopes one will overcome the experience. Initially to eventually get the perpetrators convicted and locked up to receive the help they need. Everyone needs to stop blaming the victims for the rape culture. Because the perpetrators need help in this generation to avoid future generations from experiencing an even greater rape culture. Researchers say group therapy does work effectively for survivors. There are local organizations that are waiting to help those who have survived sexual abuse or assaults. Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network, offer an online hotline as well as a crisis phone number line at, 800-656-HOPE, 4673. While facing fears, one can write a book about how and what helped overcome the traumatic experience. Practice insight. For deeper freedom and love, develop self-love to empower and impact others. Use willpower with true understanding even if it requires research. Know what your beliefs and values are to rid yourself of the self-reinforcing habitual cycle of behavior. Work on earning to achieve rather than taking to succeed, others will appreciate the progress. Acknowledge everyone has a sense of entitlement, so develop more self-awareness around others without feeling superior. Work on forgiveness, practical ideas, and expectations with others. Value the people in your life, by helping to celebrate yours and their accomplishments. Show compassion and empathy for others, make them feel special and they will make you feel special too.